Morning everyone. Well, it's time to do some trig graphs, so we'll see how that goes. All right, well, we're going to look at some trig graphs where we get a few translations um, in them today. So straight into examples and hopefully I won't be too long so you get plenty of time to actually do some work. EG19. On a separate axis, draw graphs of the following functions. Use a calculator to help establish the shape. Well, we're not going to bother with that part. Uh, so let's get straight into it. So y equals 3 sine 2 x minus pi and 4 and make sure you are aware of the domain. So it's only between pi and 4 and 5 pi and 4. So start with the amplitude. So the amplitude is equal to, well that's the number that's in front. So the amplitude is equal to 3. Remember amplitudes can only be positive. So there's, um, you know, it's simply how far it goes from the middle. Your period is 2 pi on n, and in this case, n is 2. So put 2 pi on 2, which equals pi. And we have a translation, or another word they use in trig, is a phase shift. Translation or phase shift. And that's just how far left or right the graph moves, and it moves pi on 4. So that's pi on 4. So, draw your axis up. There we go. It's not moved up or down, so our centre line is our x-axis. The amplitude was 3, so let's mark in 3 and minus 3. And we would mark in our, our traditional approach here would be to mark in um, one period. And remember one period is pi. So I'll mark in pi, break the period into four pieces. So half of pi is pi on two, and half of that is pi on four. So count by pi on fours, one pi on four, two pi on four, three pi on four, four pi on four, and remember our domain is up to 5 pi on 4, so we'll go to 5 pi on 4. Now, normally if we were doing a, um, a sine graph, we would be starting at 0. we will be starting there and going up. But remember we've got a, um, a translation here of pi on 4. So we're moving that pi on 4 to the right. So our start point is not the 0. Our start point is pi on 4. And now it's just a normal sine graph after that. So start in the middle and go up. And then follow the pattern round. And we only had to go to 5 pi on 4. And then sketch in the curve. Very nice. Might just put some axes on here, tidy that up. That was y, and it wasn't um, it wasn't x. In this case, it was t. So make sure we give it a t-axis, and of course, label. Now it's a good habit too. Um, y equals three sine two t minus pi and four. It's a good habit to be labeling the maximums and minimums. So there, that is pi on 2, 3. And of course your minimum was pi minus 3. That was A. So let's see if B is any different to that. So B, y equals 2 cos 3, t plus pi on 3. And again, just go all the, through the, all the little bits. You need your amplitude. So your amplitude is 2, your period, and these ones are usually not as much fun, your period is 2 pi on n, so 2 pi on 3, at 3 there, and the phase shift or translation, I'm going to go the phase shift, you'll see both words used, equals minus pi on 3. And of course, you're never going to forget about that domain. That's your domain. 
So you can see it goes into the negatives this time. All right, so again, um, draw up your axis. What's our letters? T and Y. The amplitude was two, so two and minus two. And I've already drawn that um, axis badly because my domain was a negative domain. So I might just, I've given myself no room to do that negative domain. So I'll put that in there. That looks better. We'll put Y there. Now, remember, mark in one period. So one period is 2 pi on 3. So if I mark in one period at 2 pi on 3, and then break that into four pieces, half of 2 pi on 3 is pi on 3. Half of pi on 3 is pi on 6. If you're not sure how I'm getting that, I'm just going pi on 3 times a half is pi on 6. Okay. So that's how I'm actually, you know, when I'm halving pi on 3. So I've got now counting, I now have found my counting unit. So 1 pi on 6, 2 pi on 6, 3 pi on 6, which is pi on 2, 4 pi on 6, and then it'll be the same in the negative. So you've got minus pi on 6, minus pi on 3. Now, if you're smart, you'll see that we don't actually need to go further than that because look at what the domain was. The domain was minus pi on 3 to pi on 3. Okay, So the, um, the breaking up of the units is sort of just to get you started to make sure you know how to, um, you know, what your counting unit is by. Now, this is a cos graph. So normally a cos graph uh, will start at the top. So our amplitude, I'll mark those back in again. So 2 and minus 2. So normally a cos graph would start where this, um, I'll just change the colour to black there, where that dot is there. But we've shifted our starting unit back pi on 3. So if we switch our starting position back to pi on 3 or minus pi on 3, um, now we just follow the cos pattern. Starts at the top and goes down. And now we just follow it along. And please be a little careful when you do these. It's not a V. Okay, it's actually nice and rounded. Okay. Now, um, there's a couple of things too um, that I should mention. I'm going to mark in that minimum point there. So that was 0 minus 2. I should always mark in the end points as well. So the um, when you've got a restricted domain, you must mark in those end points. So that was pi on 3 and the maximum was 2 and that's minus pi on 3 with a maximum of 2. Notice I actually didn't on the last example, I'm going to go back to the last example and mark those in as well. So that should have been 5 pi on 4 0 and pi on 4 0 somewhere there. And that's done a, a nice little um, a nice little shifted graphs. And they have been very easy ones to do if you like, because the shift, left or right shift, has been the same as either one unit or two whole units, and it's not always that way. And that's what our next example will do, I hope. Okay, um, I'm just gonna shift that up. There's no reason that that's there. Okay. For the function naught to two pi, f of x equals sine x minus pi on 3, find f of 0 and f of 2 pi, and then sketch the graph. Well, okay. Why are they making me do part A? And they're making you do part A because so you know where you start. Okay. So um, why not do part A then? So f of 0 is sine of 0 minus pi on 3, so sine of minus pi on 3. Remember your triangles always. There's pi on 3, 2, 1, root 3. So sine of pi 
positive pi on 3 is root 3 on 2. So sine of minus pi on 3. So if you're if it's minus pi on 3, you're in the fourth quadrant. Sine is negative. So sine of minus pi on 3 is minus root 3 on 2. What will f of 2 pi be? Let's have a look. So that'll be sine of 2 pi minus pi on 3. So if you're on a denominator of 3, 2 pi is 6 pi on 3. 6 pi on 3 minus 1 pi on 3 is sine of 5 pi on 3. And if you were going in the anti-clockwise, oh, sorry, if you're going in the clockwise direction instead, that would be the same as sine of minus pi on 3. If you've forgotten, that is 5 pi on 3 here. That is minus pi on 3. So you're in the same position. And that's what we worked out in the uh, previous example. So that's going to be minus root 3 on 2. So if you look at their domain they've given you for the actual sketch, it's 0 to 2 pi. And what that's telling you is at 0 and at 2 pi, you're starting and finishing in the same place. So now part B is sketch it. So again, in our sketch, we'll need our amplitude. Our amplitude is equal to 1, so that's coming from there. Our period is what's in front of the x, the end value is what's in front of the x, so our period is 2 pi on 1, which is 2 pi. And our shift, or translation, should never use the word shift, our translation is positive pi on 3. So what's the big deal with that? Well, it's no big deal, but it just means our units aren't as nice as we might like. So what we do is we change our units. So we've got x here, and it was f of x this time. And it's 1 and minus 1. Now, so what I'm going to do here now is normally I mark in one period. And then I'll break that period into four parts. So if we break the period into four parts, we'll have pi, we'll have pi on two, and we'll have three pi on two. One pi on two, two pi on two, three pi on two, four pi on two. Now, the problem happens because we've now got to shift our graph. This is a sine graph that normally would start in the middle and then you know, go up follow the pattern and like that. But we're now moving it pi on 3. And pi on 3 is 60 degrees. Pi on 2 is 90 degrees. So our start position is not here. Our start position is here. Sorry about that. So our start position is there. Okay. Now, it's easy enough to see that, okay, well, if we, we, our next position would be like move 90 degrees, so move pi on 2. Our next one would be here. Our next one would be here. It's like always two-thirds of a unit. Come on, computer. Two-thirds of a unit. And our next one would be here. I'm just going there. Oh, come on. Now, if I put in another unit, that's 4 pi on 2. Your next one would be 5 pi on 2. So your next position would be back here. Likewise, if I'd been uh, going backwards, the unit before 0 is minus pi on 2. Okay, so you can see that um, if you were going back, your next position would be about there. So we could sketch this curve in. Okay, so I'm going to do it here, but remember our domain starts at zero. So I'm going to do dotted here until I get to here. Then I'm going to 
do this. Join that up, hopefully like that, like that. I'm gonna stop there because that's the end of 2 pi and then it would be, you know, dotted down like that. So this is the shape of our graph here. Okay, now we can label the endpoints because we worked those out in part A. So this part was 2 pi minus root 3 on 2 and this was 0 minus root 3 on 2. So what we've got to do though is work out where those x-intercepts were. So we know the first one because we shifted the graph pi on 3. So we know that that is pi on 3. Now notice this position here what we've done is we've taken pi on 2 and then we've added pi on 3 because we've shifted it pi on 3. So this is plus pi on 3 here. And the same happens for every other position that we have. This one is that distance there would be plus pi on 3. So we've actually, if we had marked in our original coordinates, we would have had 0, we would have then had pi on 2. If we hadn't have had any shift, you would have had pi, you would have had 3 pi on 2. Okay. So what we've done to each of those is add pi on 3. So 0 plus pi on 3 is pi on 3. Pi on 2 plus pi on 3. Well, pi on 2 is 3 pi on 6. Pi on 3 is 2 pi on 6. Which makes 5 pi on 6. When we did the 3 pi on 2, if we add pi on 3, oh, sorry, I missed the pi one there. I'll do that one first. So pi plus pi on 3 is equal to 4 pi on 3. And the last one, 3 pi on 2 plus pi on 3 is, put them on 6, 9 pi on 6 plus 2 pi on 6 is 11 pi on 6. So, marking in these points, so we've got pi on 3, so this next point here would be 5 pi on 6, 1. This point here is going to be 4 pi on 3. And this minimum value down here will be 11 pi on 6 minus 1. So now we've actually got our, um, our curve labelled properly. We've got all our um, intercepts in, we've got everything we need. I guess I probably should have labelled it. So if I label it, I have f of x is equal to sine x minus pi on 3. Okay, that's all there is for these. So um, they take a little bit of working out, but um, good luck with them. So time for your questions now. And um, there's also going to be, um, I'll also do the, the next um, little video as well, which is when we add a vertical translation. So have fun.